Today we are on the bank, the river bank of Hammersmith, where I have filmed before. I've done a little couple of scenes here and I was here filming for a previous documentary I did called Bloody Sunday covering that house over there, that big one, which was lived in by William Morris and that's part of the William Morris Society, which belonged to a man who was friends with Eleanor Marx, a Marxist, a socialist and a communist supporter. But that's not why we're here today. We're here today to talk about the dove. Cameraman, have a look where we are. That's it. A very beautiful, expensive location, actually. That way for me? Very serene place. You get a lot of people learning to canoe here. There's a, there's a, a canoeing club just over there. It's quite renowned. But, like I said, we are here to see the dove directly behind me. And what makes the dove so special isn't just that it's quaint and houses a lot of celebrities these days, well, it doesn't house them, they come to drink, um, is the fact that it's the Guinness World Record holder for the smallest bar in Britain. So it's got its own unique little quirky um, point of interest, which has brought me to it today. So let's go and have a look at the bar. Cameraman, follow me. I mean, it goes about saying just how beautiful this place would be to live. But you'd uh, need a few pound note to do it. Not all of London is lost. Not just yet. Many of these houses in the area have been lived in by famous people. I'll cover that shortly. Another beautiful lantern, lanterns outside. Another lovely little door. to have a drink at the smallest bar in Britain. Sure. Is it's, this the one? It's the smallest bar is that room. One? This is the smallest bar room. Oh, <laughs> Can I? Okay. No worries. Uh, yeah, that's the smallest bar room in the, in the world. Apparently. In the world. I didn't want to say in the world yeah. in case there's one in Thailand there or something. Could be, there could be. Yeah. That's it. I didn't do the uh, digital. The that's it. Yeah. Myself, yeah. The, yeah. The Guinness uh, Book of Records poster is on the wall. Hold on, mate. Our, uh, yeah. I claim to fame anyway. That's absolutely wonderful. Right, get us a scotch for now then, please. Scotch. Yeah. For these gentlemen, anything else? What do you want? No worries. Do I hear a Pepsi or a Pepsi? Shh. Do us a... Is that Glamorangie in the corner? Glamorangie, Yeah, I'll have one of them. Yeah, please. single or double? Double. Can't be cheap on no, camera. Exactly. Need to be on the rocks, please. Rocks. Here we go, here we go. Famous for being the best place on the Thames to watch the Oxford and Cambridge boat race, the Dove also inspired 18th century regular James Thompson to pen Rule Britannia. There you go. Luke will like that one, Luke on Cage will like that one. Well, look, look turn around, come on the camera, look at this lovely little fireplace. I can't get enough of fireplaces. Right, they've just left a little bar. With me, with me. So have a look. Yeah. Just have a little door, look. And this is it. The smallest bar in Britain. Look at it. I think it's meant to be, what is it they said? Four foot by something. And this was the flood height in 1928, look. Look at this. 
Here we go. Here we go. Hang on. Guinness Book of World Records. This is to certify that Dove Inn, London W uh, W6, smallest public bar room, four foot by two inches. Let me have a sit down. Let me have a sit down. Chunk. So hang on, I've got to watch watch my head now, because right. Okay. It's, it's very sweet, isn't it? Very quaint. I thought it'd be smaller than this, to be honest. I thought it'd actually be really squashed in, but um, it's quite nice and charming. Nice old fashioned bell up there. Before we go and check out the garden and have our usual smoke, I do want to go and have a look at some of these pictures in here. Because um, it looks like they're relatively historic and cover the area. So let's go and have a little look. And we'll, we'll have a little stop in here on the way back. But let's go and uh, have a look at some of those picture frames. These are all wonderful paintings of Hammersmith Bridge across the ages. 1829, this one. What's that one? 1921. I love. 1800 stuff. Anything 1800s, you know, genuine history. This way, this way. Let's get out of these people's way. I mean, th this, this, this bar, uh, the doors, I just love it. Look, uh, look at the entrance from this side. Look. Oh, this is lovely. They used to have a, a ladder that led down to the Thames, look. Come across all these, they're, they're so good. Oh, look at that, look at that. That's Earl, Earl's Court Station, look. See, the others are wonderful pictures, but these are really relevant to the place, because obviously, whether you're a landlord or a local, this, this has been an important part of your life. <coughs> and as usual, it's got that old-fashioned decor inside. The wood, the dark colors, love it. I mean, I lo look, at the, look at the walls, absolutely love the walls. This is absolutely wonderful. So this beautiful little garden, this pub garden, is actually a patio onto the Thames, which is well worth coming to see. As I mentioned inside, it's a place that people come to watch the canoe boats and what have you, and to just enjoy the city. I think I'm gonna take refuge in that little corner over there. It looks very inviting. I like this up here as well. Look over there, cameraman, look at this. Look at this. Oh yes, look at this, absolutely. First class, absolutely first class. Come over to my eyesight for me please. Cameraman and pan around. I think having the bar makes it that much more special, but it's still great. I expected um, it to be a relatively plain little pub with an interesting bar, but it's actually a, a fascinating, wonderful pub with a really interesting little bar.
Now, Hammersmith Bridge, that's not actually the original bridge. They actually had to change that one over in the past. But it's still a lovely feature to the area. Anyway, let's get out of here. A quick jack dash before we go, I think. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to have a quick jack dash before we go anywhere. So we. And no, this, this episode doesn't have a toilet feature, so pause it. Luckily, my cameraman actually stopped recording, otherwise this would have picked me up using, using the urinal. So anyway, let's get out of here. Lovely old wall, this. Thank you very much, mate. Take care. Take care. Watch the step. Steps. Thank you very much, mate. You take care. Now we're going to have a little look at something just around the corner. This way. Because just next door, there's something incredibly interesting. Did you see the. You're welcome. This is nice, isn't it? Look at this. The seasons. This, this entire area is so fascinating. I used to be a traveller myself. But this house is also a bit of a relic in the area. Thomas James Cobden Sanderson, 1840 to 1922, founded the Dove's Bindery and Dove's Press in this house and later lived and died here. So this is one of the first presses. I think it might have even been the, the first press. Look at the old-fashioned windows as well. Though. You can see up there without invading anyone's privacy too much. It's hard. It's hard not to do that when you're looking at such fascinating buildings. The old candle, the old-fashioned candles he's got up there. But every part of this area is um, worth checking out. So this amazing. Victorian building with obvious Victorian brickwork is the Rutland Arms and it was smashed to pieces during the Blitz, the bombing of the Second World War. And as you can see, an amazing job was done in putting it back together. And it's absolutely splendid to see something like this when we're losing so many pubs for no reason. So this one had a bomb smash it to pieces and people still rebuilt it. But then many, many other pubs, people were just buying them to knock them down, to turn them into estates, or they're just secretly sort of painting over them. But yet specialist pubs like this in incredibly wealthy areas, they're preserved. I suppose we're lucky to have what we have for now. Let's have a little look at it as we pass. It looks absolutely splendid, doesn't it? And they've gone the, the full length to save it. And it, that looks like they've actually got the same street sign on it. Not that, not that I can know for sure, but that does look suspiciously like it might even be the uh, sign that was there previously when the bomb damage actually took, took place. Once again, I don't know for sure. And you know me, I love a lantern. And just another pub with a beautiful view. If we can preserve this when it was blown to smithereens by an explosive device, then there's absolutely no reason that we can't preserve many others like it.
see you soon.